Okay, so we're back with the ROG Ally once again and today I just want to talk about the software of this machine. So when you first boot it up, so I got my fingerprint already registered, they do have the caching feature for your fingerprint as well. So it will automatically read your fingerprint when you hold on to the power button to power on the device. As you can see here, it will automatically log in for me. Okay, and once you boot it up, it will automatically go into the Armory Create software. So this is what you will see once you boot it up. And it makes sense because here is where all your games are located. So I got a bunch of stuff installed already. But today I want to talk about what makes the Armory Create SE software, which is this one, so special when it comes to the ROG Ally. So let's begin. Once you boot it up, what you can see here is that you can launch your game directly right here by pressing the A button which is play or you can also customize the game profile as well. So I will not touch all of that yet, I will go into the settings and here you can configure the control mode so let's press it in and then you got two modes to control so one is game mode, gamepad mode whereby all of the face buttons work like an Xbox controller and desktop mode is when your joysticks works as a mouse cursor, arrow key and your triggers work as left click and right click. So in this menu here, let's just head into the gamepad mode and as you can see, all of the buttons are unassigned here, which means they're all by default and your, you can also set your dead zone for your left stick or right stick or even your triggers because they are analog triggers and also your vibration strength of each motor, left and right. So this one is pretty typical. You can also set secondary function for the two back buttons that are on the ROG Ally as well. So for example, I'm not too sure if I can do it here. Yep. So in this menu here, I can map the M1 or M2, which is what they're calling the back buttons to maybe the ABXY buttons or the trigger buttons or bumper buttons, which is the uh, right button or left button on these two sides here. You can do that. Now let's just go back to this menu here. And for desktop mode, this is a bit special since it is using Windows anyway, you will need some way to navigate around Windows. So by default, we already have right click as the right trigger button. The right button will be left click and then you will also have a lot more configurations preset already. But I'm not going to talk about it here. So you can head back to the desktop menu. So you can see here on desktop, the right joystick will be the cursor movement. Then right click, right trigger. Whoop, there you go then left click is the right button but remembering all of that is a bit stupid right you can hold this button and then it will show you a list of buttons that are already mapped and what you can do with all of those buttons let me just zoom it in for you to see and there you go just by holding this button right here it will show you all of the buttons and what it does so this is a very good feature just remember to hold this button when you want to have a look Now back to this menu in the Armory Create SE, we can change the operating mode as well. So currently I have it in turbo mode, which is well, depending on if you have the charger plugged in or not. If you plug it in, then it will be at 30 watts. If you don't plug it in, then it will be at 25 watts. Performance is at 15 watts, whereby silent will be at 9 watts. Windows, I really never use it. Manual, you can also set in your own manual power profile. So you can select what kind of wattage for each of these parameters, your fan curve and all of those stuff. I'm not going to touch it because usually I just use their presets. That's good enough. And then for system stats, you can monitor all of these things, which I don't find it to be useful at all. You've got task manager and whatnot. The only one thing special here is obviously the fan speed, but then we also have eco assist. Again, I'm just leaving this by default. I'm not going to touch it. But as you can see here, it helps you to enter hibernate mode when this console is in sleep. And in the GPU settings, you can actually change your VRAM amount from 1 gig all the way to 8 gigs, which is special because for this kind of console, let me just put up task manager and then you can see the memory that you have here is 16 gigs in total. So you have to split a total of 4 gigs of it for the GPU VRAM. So if that is not enough for you, you can increase it here to 8 gigs, which is, well, kind of depends on what game you're playing. Maybe you're going to need uh, a lot more higher texture resolution, then you will have to increase your VRAM. But 
For 1080p screen, I think 4 gigs is a pretty nice spot, especially since you can't really play games at the highest graphical settings on the ROG Ally. So I'll go back to this menu here. So we have game visuals, which is well, just presets for your screen. As you can see here, when I tap, the color profile changes for the screen. That's pretty typical. And then lighting. Yeah, this is where the RGB lighting for the joysticks will come into play. So color cycle. As you can see, the joysticks are now color cycling. And then rainbow, well, pretty typical. I just set it to fastest anyway, why not, right? And also the brightest because ROG and RGB are inseparable. And then now for connections, again, not really going to talk about it. It's just a bunch of Bluetooth and Wi-Fi connection here. And then audio, once again, not going to talk about it because currently I don't even have an external audio. Oh, yeah. The Amri Crit SE is a bit buggy. And as you can see, it just crashed on me. And as I was saying, I don't have any external microphones or headphones plugged into this thing. So I can't really do much with that menu. If we go back to the audio menu here. Hopefully it doesn't crash. If it crashes, then I will have to report this. Yeah, okay, it doesn't crash. So AI noise cancelling speakers. I'm not really know what this does. Can it actually filter out noise by the speaker? Eh, anyway, microphone mode. The, they do have two built-in microphones on the ROG Ally. So this is where you can tune in some of the settings. I'm not sure why you want to use it for a call, but you can. And then let's just go back to this menu, Aura Sync. Again, if you have even more peripherals connected to the uh, ROG Ally, for example, let's just say you got the XG Mobile connected with your ROG keyboard and mouse, then you can use Aura Sync to sync all of the RGB together. But since we don't have it, I'm not gonna use this. Then for Command Center, this is where you can customize this menu here. When you press this button, this overlay comes out, and then you have a bunch of shortcuts for you to quickly access. So we have operation mode, which is to set the TDP. So for example, just now silent performance and also turbo mode. Control mode, so you can change between the gamepad mode and desktop mode on the fly. So for example, let's just say control mode here. Currently it's in gamepad mode. If I tap it again, it's in desktop mode. Tap it again, it's in auto. So that's all it does. Game profiles is something that we'll get into later. Keyboard is just to show the keyboard. Real time monitor to show you the FPS, resolution, battery, blah, 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 all of those stuff. Then FPS limiter is for you to limit the FPS because this is a 1080p, 120Hz screen. You can limit it down to, let's just say, 30FPS, 60FPS, all of those stuff. So yeah, 15, 30, 45, 60, off. Show desktop, pretty self-explanatory, and beta controller. So you can literally disable the controller. Not too sure why, but you can do it. Maybe because if you connect to um, an external Xbox controller, for example, and then it says you have technically two players connected to the controller, then you can disable the built-in gamepad and then you can just use your external controller if you want to. Uh, AMD RSR, this is a Radeon Super Resolution. You can disable or enable it. AMD RIS is Radeon Image Sharpening. So you can only enable RSR or RIS but not two at the same time. Then resolution, you can change between 720p, 1080p, refresh rate, 60Hz and 120Hz. Then you can also have a shortcut here to take screenshots, but you can even add more. So game library to show you the game library that we have just now. Game visual, all of the color profile for your screens, LED brightness, airplay mode, record screen, microphone, all of those stuff. You can add even more shortcuts if you want to. But currently, I have it set up like this. And then for content, we have a lot of stuff here. So media gallery, this is where you can see all of the screenshots that I've taken using the ROG Ally. You can hold the back button here, the M1, and then press A to take a screenshot. I will show you right now. If I hold either one of the back buttons, press A, then it will have a simple flash. And then it will tell me screenshot has been taken. I just swipe to close that and then you can see my screenshot is here yeah there you go and then system this is where you can check all of the specs and stuff so the version that we have here is ryzen z1 extreme 16 gigs of lpddr 5 ram 6400 megahertz 
1080p. I currently have it in 60Hz because of battery concerns. We will address it in our full review. Then storage, this is how much that I've been using and about. Yeah. Oh, by the way, I should also highlight that we have the Armory Crate SE updated to version 1.2.4. BIOS version, I think it's 137. I can't really remember. But either way, I have it updated to the latest version, which has a lot of changes from all of the other reviews that you have seen so far. And then Help Center, User Center, not really gonna touch it. Update Center is where we will have to update all of the stuff because this thing technically still has a lot of updates. And as we mentioned earlier, there were already a lot of UI changes to the Armory Crate SE since it was first released. So I presume that there will be even more changes coming soon. So remember to check for updates when you get your ROG Ally. I will not do that now because I need to do this video. Game platforms is where you can have all of your game launches plugged into this single shortcut. Doesn't really work that well because once you, let's just say we launch Epic Games for example, then from here to Epic Games is fine, but once we are in Epic Games Launcher, then the entire interface just falls apart. Technically, you will start to use the touchscreen because, you know, controllers, they don't really work that well. You can't really select anything. So yeah, you can just left click and right click use, using the joysticks. Now back to the Armory Crate SE, the last feature that I want to show you here is actually the game profile. So let's just say uh, I want to change for Bastion for example. Currently, all of these are in default but if I change anything within the Bastion game profile, then it will only apply to this game. So for example, so for example, let me just show you Oxen Free here. I set it to Silent Power Profile, Dark Joysticks, Vivid Game Visual. So again, currently it's in Turbo and uh, if we launch Oxen Free, then you will see it actually working. I just don't know why it eventually worked for Oxenfree but it didn't work for Bastion even after reboot. That is a mystery for another time but as far as I can tell you, Armory Crate SE is just buggy. Oh yeah, it didn't apply for Oxenfree now as well so no idea what's going on. Oh it did went to Silent Power Profile so okay at least that works but the joysticks are still shining. So that's it, that's pretty much all I have to share with you about the Armory Crate SE. This is a very cool piece of software. It has a lot of features, but currently it's still in a very buggy state, I would say, but you can take advantage of some of the features that are available here. And that's it. So that's our full showcase of what the Armory Crate SE can do. So if you have any other questions, do leave them down in the comment section below and I will see you guys in our full review of the ROG Ally. So do subscribe and we'll see you there.